Hello everyone and welcome to the Dice Commando YouTube channel. I'm Andrew with you here as always. This is the Commando Cast, a video cast about all things Star Wars Destiny. This video and others like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. Please show your support with a like and subscribe, and be sure to hit the bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. If you want to get involved with the channel, consider becoming a channel member. There are many benefits to channel membership, including access to our Discord, exclusive deck tech and strategy videos, and the opportunity to help create channel content. I want to sincerely thank all our channel members, as I truly couldn't do this without your support. You guys rock. Go Commando! The team-up mechanic is something that I firmly believe to be a really fun, important, and useful part of Star Wars Destiny, something that helps ensure theme and build-round decks actually have a competitive place within the game. Yet, the current implementation of team-up greatly concerns me about its potential future impact of the game if left unchecked. So in today's video, I'll explain what I mean and why, and I'm also asking the question if a design rule around the team-up mechanic isn't warranted. Hey there, Star Wars Destiny folks. Welcome back to Dice Commando and the Commando cast, and happy Destiny Friday. Thank you for tuning in today. So holidays are done. I hope everyone had a uh, great holiday, but it is time to hit the ground running. We actually have the GQs uh, this weekend, tomorrow, well, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, so I'll see I'll see you guys on the virtual table. See you guys on the virtual table. So yeah, time to, time to move past those holidays and get, get back to where we were. So today, yeah, like I said, I wanted to talk about the team-up mechanic and you know maybe maybe where it's going and talk about you know maybe maybe some ideas for for kind of kind of capping its capping its upside so it, just to get some things out of the way in in the you know in today's video i'm going to be talking going to be using some examples of some air age cards i want to be very clear and i don't think those cards are busted i don't think there's necessarily a straight problem with those cards what i'm really looking at this is more of a thought experiment and i'm going to be using those as examples of saying like where were we where are we now and where might we be and, and would it maybe be necessary to kind of put in a, a design rule, design guideline unable on, to enable us to really check the upside of, of what team up can do? So many of you be asking, well, what is, a, what is a design rule? Well, design rule is an industry term for engineering, for design, for product development that basically limits the original design in order to ensure that the final product is manufacturable, right? So you know, the architect or whatever who's sitting down and they're drawing the plans, coming up with what what this thing's going to look like, they have to follow certain rules that have been learned over time in manufacturing. So, you know, we, we can't build that. We, we, you know, you can't put a big girder on a small beam. It's going to break, right? So, you know, stuff, stuff like that. And basically it boils down to, you know, design is one thing, but implementation of said design, aka actually building it, is quite another. And I see a lot of parallels in that aspect to CCG game design, right? Something may look really great. You have all the pieces together and they make this really cool deck, but then it gets released to the public and the smart minds take some of those pieces and mix them with other pieces. And all of a sudden you've got this hell deck that is just, you know, destroying the meta, right? So I, I, I see something, I see, like I said, I see a lot of parallels to that. So to kick off today's discussion, what I wanted to do was kind of harken back to um, mid spring or early late, well, yeah, it was like mid spring of 2020, right? Pretty early in the pandemic. Uh, we were in that uh, kind of long slog between the Covert Missions release, waiting on news for Worlds, and uh, waiting for ARH to pick up, which didn't end up being until, you know, late fall, because they were kind of waiting for everything to happen, which was fine. But we had a long time on the same on the same set. And during that time, we'd kicked off the DC team. We were starting to do online tournaments. And I came up with the idea to, you know, spice it up a little bit. I released something called called the Counterpart set. Now, counterpart was really a th counter counterpart set was really a thought experiment on my part to see how far we could push, how far we could push certain things in order to basically make two wide viable again, right? And if you guys recall where we used to be, three wides were largely dominant for the last several metas. Uh, you know, I mean, Raylo was a thing, and two wides were there, but three wides largely, by and large, had always, paid, almost always, des dominated in Destiny, right? Overall. Right, so this thought experiment I had was, okay, what do we need to do to make two wides relevant again? And, and again, huge shout out to ARH. I think by and large, they have made two wides like pretty ultimately competitive. I think they've done a pretty good job with that. Um, they've done it basically by pushing points, um, but they, they've managed to keep things pre pretty balanced overall. 
So huge shout out there. Now, now my, my headspace was relatively the same as theirs in that what we needed to do was push these character points. The question was, how could you push these character points and still keep them in check? And what I came up with was the counterpart mechanic. So, so what I'm showing up across the screen right now is counterpart mechanic and how it worked. But, but functionally, in a nutshell, if you played a character with another specific character as called out, right, you'll see there, you know, team up Qui-Gon Jinn, counterparts 23, right? It wasn't just, it wasn't, you know, team up Jedi. It wasn't, you know, team up Qui-Gon. It was play him with this. And what that allowed me to do was push the points, push the power level of these specific characters, knowing that they could be designed, kept in design check because they were very limited on who they could be played with. Okay, so I mean, and you know, functionally simple enough. Uh, do one note, one thing was my, mine actually affected total build points. It didn't actually affect the points of the character, which is actually what, what team up does. Uh, but let's go ahead and fast forward then to transformations, which came out, was it mid July, August of that year? I think that's about right. Maybe, maybe it was early, I think it was July. It, either way, uh, Jeremy released transformations for us and it had team up, which was, I mean, remarkably similar to mine. It was actually, to my idea, it was actually better than my idea because it was less restrictive, um, assuming it could be kept in check, right? But ha keeping it less restrictive, I, I, I don't necessarily like the part that team up reduces the character's points, but I mean, it's kind of, you know, half a dozen, whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter ultimately. But you, you looked at, you know, someone like Luke Skywalker and he was, you know, team up Obi-Wan, team up Yoda. He, he was very specific with who he could play with. Now, again, his was more general, which left the door open for, you know, infinite and for, for future design, which was which was really cool. Like I said, not quite as limiting as my as, as my proposal. And, and team up, I mean, again, so, t I mean, that was the introduction of team up. It, it was functionally kind of doing what we really wanted it to do, which was giving some sort of advantage for playing with a particular character which would thus let in theory the team be pushed right use that that term i hate push right you could push the team while keeping them in check because you very had a very specific design limit now we also had closing in captured in that same set captured was the uh, downgrade closing in was the plot but this was a this this one was not named specifically it was unique bounty hunter but it was worth four right so you couldn't there there was a three wide deck i think it was dingar Zuckus and Greedo, is that right? Either way, I mean, it was kind of a garbage deck, but you know, you let you put a ton of health on the table. Uh, but there's only three dice start. Anyway, point is, it was four cost, which meant that it still didn't go negative. Like there was no way at the time to make the the plot go negative. So, yeah, just just I mean, that, that's that's what it was. It, I mean, the idea was not to be able to go negative when things were were unspecified. So. All right, so with that said, let's go ahead and kind of fast forward to the, the two plots I really want to use to talk about today, which are Ace Pilots and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the war that never ends, mission that never ends. Um, so Ace Pilot is team up one each unique pilot, okay, so they have to be unique, uh, and then it, it, it does a thing, right? But this is a two-cost plot, which means that it can go negative, right? If you play three pilots, which we've seen that deck doing quite well, especially because Aiden is probably busted, right? But that deck's doing quite well. And uh, you can go negative if you run three wide. So that's, and it does a thing, right? And it does a thing. So you're essentially adding this to your team, you're getting a free plot, you're actually getting more than a free plot, you're getting a negative plot. So it helps your team. Now, the theory there being that you know, it has to be pilots. Okay, I mean, that's fine. So you know, ARH has done and, and they did, right? ARH has done their design testing, they kept it in line with the pilots. But, but now I'm asking the question, right, should we be having, should we have these plots that go negative and still do something, right? And, and I think that's the impact of team up because no one wants to just have a plot because it's boring, right? Nobody wants to just have a plot that says team up one each unique pilot, right? That would be boring. It has to do something as well because then you can feel like a super smart designer. I mean, that's, you know, it's fun to do it, right? We get it. Um, but but now you're now you have negative and it's it's a little unrestricted. So that's that's interesting to me. Uh, we also then look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? Team up one each trooper. So this one is not limited to uniques, uh, but it is limited by trooper. So again, you have your design limitation in there. And, you know, at, at the very least, this is free. I mean, it's huge upside for being free. But again, it's limited to your troopers. Uh, it could potentially go, it could potentially go um, minus two, potentially, if you have four wide, which, I mean, you can do. Now, remember, you also have 
you also have unlikely heroes. So I mean, neither here nor there. But I mean, this is this is just, so anyway. Anyway, you guys you guys get it right. So so with with that in mind, the the question on the design rules then is really sh- well, not a question on design rules, but the, kind of the philosophy of team up, or at least where my head's at, or what I've been thinking about is, you know, should these plots go negative? Right? Should they be able to go negative? And if they do, shouldn't if they do, should they be more tightly controlled than just pilot, right? Should it be, you know, should ace pilots have been, you know, rogue squadron where Luke, Dak, and Wedge all get minus one or something like that, right? I mean, again, I'm not proposing that, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there, right? Would it would it be better for us, right? Would the design rule in this case that we put in be that you need to specify specific individuals rather than just saying pilots, right? And, and in this case, unique pilots. But right, and, and again, I, I want to be very clear. I'm not picking on ace pilots. I just think it's a perfect example of this because because it can it can go negative. Um, heck, I mean, Mission, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can go negative, right? I mean, you guys you guys get it, right? So having these plots that one can go negative, two are either free or can go negative and still do something is uh, is pretty concerning for, right, if this becomes the new baseline, I think that's pretty concerning. Now, again, I have every faith in the RH team to design it and then test it well. That's not the concern, right? But it's this thing of, should we just go ahead and say, look, if, if, if you're going to have a negative plot, it has to be detrimental to you not a positive to you. And, you know, I mean, you can look back at Battle Rivalry, and granted, Battle Rivalry had no, there were no build restrictions. I mean, it, well, it was blue. I mean, but you know what I mean, right? Saying only troopers gives design way more flexibility to control that than just having a blue plot, right? Again, so completely fair, but Battle Rivalry was huge. It was a big negative, right? The pilot, Ace Pilots is no negative, right? And and there is the argument there, yes, on ace pilots that many people aren't going to use, might might not use the the thing. Fair enough. So maybe it's just there to be negative, but it's still there to be negative, and there's no real not that there's no there there is no negative other than that you have to only play pilots. So and unique pilots. Right. So so again, like again, I would want to be very clear. I'm not I'm not picking on these designs, but hopefully you can see where my head is in terms of man, if this is becoming the new thing or if this is where you know design is going you could see how it could get out of control in the future because now next time we're like well ace pilots gave minus one and did something pretty cool we want this one to be really pushed because we're going to put it with witches or something like that who are not very good right now put it with night 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 sisters night brothers whatever uh inquisitors who are not you know but anyway you guys get it right at the some point the decision is like oh we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push this one we're gonna push this one aka which let's be honest I hear that all the time. Well, this was a push set. No, what that means is that you intentionally made it overpowered with the intention of keeping it in check with itself, right? I mean, let's be clear there, right? So if we decide to push a plot, does it have to be better than the last push plot? I mean, yes, it does by definition, right? So that's kind of where my head is at is, you know, we've got all this cool stuff happening right now. We've seen what it can do. And uh, would it be apt? Would it be to our benefit to really try and, and check that in terms of in terms of the potential upside. And one of the ways we could do that is just simply, you know, within the ARH team. I mean, I, I know I know that the ARH, you know, design set, you know, Zion left notes for all the people behind him and they all have their design logs. And and for sure they do that. Um, but you know, would it be behoove the ARH team to be like, look, here here's the set of rules we have, right? If you're gonna do Somebody, you have to have a point EV ratio. If you're going to do a plot, it can only do this, right? And and the one that I think is is the easiest poster child for that right now, which is why we're talking about it, is is team up, right? I mean, team up has the potential to get out of control because the smart people are gonna do smart things, right? So I'm just wondering if putting in some sort of specificity, specificity, specificity. There we go. Putting in a specific call out or whatever it may be might be the right thing to do. So, you know, I'm just spitballing here. I mean, I'm not really spitballing because I kind of put a lot of thought on this, but um, you guys know what I'm saying, right? I don't have the right answer, nor would I even pretend to have the right answer. It's just an idea I had and a question I thought worth asking. Um, and I thought that was a reasonable discussion to have around it is, you know, what what should we do? How, how should team up really be used going forward in Destiny? What would be the best way to use team up in Destiny? 
to make sure that uh, it doesn't go sideways. On so anyway, that's that's it. I'd, I'd love to hear your guys' comments, your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'm looking forward to getting some games in with you guys this weekend. Uh, I'll see you guys on the tables. If nothing else, folks, go Commando.